A wise man once said, a burger in a bun is just a burger in a bun, unless you add sauce. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're not gonna be looking at burgers in buns. We're gonna be looking at tube compression and how it can add vibe and flavor. See, there's the, uh, the connection. Flavor to your masters and your mixes. Now, obviously, this is all in the box. I don't have a million pounds or a Fairchild 670. So I'm just gonna show you my favorite tube compressors in the box and just show you how I use them on masters just to kind of imprint a little bit of flavor. So let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. This is a master that I've worked on before for a client, but I like to use it to test out plugins because it's really nicely balanced throughout the frequency spectrum. It's got some vocals, some nice drums, that kind of thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run through a bunch of tube compressors that I use to add warmth and a bit of character and a bit of flavor to masters and on the mix bus. And they're just, they're just my favorite ones. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on how each plugin works because there's a ton of videos online on each one of these plugins going into more depth. But really, I'm just gonna show you how I use them to get some flavor. Uh, and it's just imprinting a little bit of warmth and a bit of character and a bit of flavor and a bit of glue. And just, you know, it just kind of, you know, obviously in the box, we're working with digital files. And a lot of the time you do spend a lot of time, in fact, trying to make those digital files sound a little bit warmer by using saturation, by using tape plugins, and by using tube compression. So what I'm really gonna do here is just demonstrate me using my favorite tube compressors, how I use them, the kind of settings that I use to just get a bit of warmth. And they're all very, very subtle, so I would suggest listening on headphones because it's probably the best way that you're gonna be able to hear the subtle differences that these compressors will imprint on the signal. So we're gonna kick off with a favorite, the Fairchild. There's a whole bunch of companies that do Fairchild emulations. UAD is the one that I tend to use, but I have used Waves before, that's another good one. Slate do a decent one. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of decent ones. I do tend to favor the UAD one just because I like the sound that it imprints and I like the way that it acts. I like the sidechain filter on it. I like the fact that it's got some headroom adjustments. You can adjust the knee slightly. Basically a lot more controls that you don't actually have on the actual Fairchild. And let's be honest, how many of us actually have real Fairchilds? So I'm gonna go into in and out of bypass initially without any compression on there whatsoever. So it's not gonna be reading anything on here, but it, it does immediately imprint what feels like a tiny bit of a roll off in the high end and just warms things up and adds a little bit of girth in the bottom end. But like I said, it's really only gonna be able, you're really only gonna be able to hear it if you're wearing headphones, decent headphones. But I can hear it in these headphones. So let's just uh, put it in and out of bypass initially. And then with the fast settings that I have here, although it's obviously not known for being really fast, but fast settings for a Fairchild tends to be one or two. And then I'm just gonna add a bit of um, compression. Gonna take the side chain up to kind of round about here. What I'll do is I'll use the needles here to get uh, an impression of how the compressor is reacting to the, to the low end. I don't really want to compress the low end. Really, I just wanna warm up the sort of four or five K upwards. So I will push this side chain up a little bit, but we'll, we'll do that on the fly and I'll just show you. immediately as soon as it starts the needle starts moving I can hear the transients being rounded off and being rounded off a little bit too much and it's not really what I want to do I don't really want to hear compression when I use these techniques with tube compressors you want kind of a bit of rounding off but you don't really want to affect the the low end too much you don't really want to affect the volume too much and you really don't want to affect the transients especially on snare drums things like that Maybe the transients on some of the hi-hats and some of the, the high-end, some of the vocals is nice. So that's why I will push this up. Oh. 
See now, very, very subtle, but what I can hear now is it's not affecting the low end. It isn't really affecting the transients in the lower mid range. The snares aren't really being affected too much, but what it is doing is it's just rounding things off with the vocal, warming things up. Uh, very, very subtle, like I said. What I'll do is I'll just push it a little bit more so you can kind of hear where it starts. And then you, with this technique of warming things up and, and kind of adding that tube flavor, push it so that you just start hearing it and then bring it back a little bit. That's, that's what I tend to do. By the way, just pointing out, when you go into bypass on this UAD, the needles still move, but it is actually in bypass, trust me. See, now it's really being affected. Best way I can describe it is it just makes everything creamy, um, especially the fair child. So you can see what my technique is. Really, it's just have it on kind of mix bus settings, so it's uh, quite a fast release, slow attack. Don't really want to affect the transients. It's just a really subtle warming up, especially in the high end. So use the side chain filter as well, just so that the compression is not affecting the low end too much. So I'm going to run through these different compressors now using the same kind of technique and just show you the different kind of flavors that you can add with these different compressors. And these are just my favorite tube compressors in the box. There are tons out there, loads of different versions of each one of these as well. Uh, so let's just run through these. This one is from Archuria. It's the STA, really, really nice. So this one in particular really does round things off and I use this quite a lot on vocals, especially if there's a, a female vocals, really, really warms them up. It just does something to kind of 15K through to kind of 3K that just makes it sound very, very kind of tape-like. I've never used a real one of these. I would absolutely love to, but I really, really like Arturia's emulation. It, it's a really nice, warm, tubey sound. By the way, I am trying my hardest to get the gain exactly right. There is going to be a tiny little bit of a fluctuation. This particular one does something really nice to the hats as well, like 7K upwards. It's like there's almost a roll off, but it's a really nice, gentle slope. That's, that's why I really like this one. So let's move on to probably actually my favorite, which is from Acoustica Audio, El Ray. Absolutely love this. So let's just uh, run through this one again. See, I've got a slow attack, fast release. I'll take the side chain filter up to about 150. And then you have to apply quite a lot of this and then a little bit of makeup gain. You have also got a mix here, but because I'm trying to imprint flavor and it's very, very subtle, I'm not really finding that I use the wet and dry knob very much in parallel compressing.
this one especially really, really warms things up. If you listen to the hi-hats and the kind of high end of the vocal, the clarity in the vocal, it just rounds it off really, really nicely, but doesn't, it doesn't make things sound muffled. It just kind of caresses it, warms it. This particular compressor does also add a bit of bottom end. I can hear it in the headphones. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear it, but yeah, it adds a bit of girth as well, which is something that tube compression can can also do. You have to be a bit careful with the L Ray, especially because if it adds too much girth and too much weight in the bottom end, obviously that's going to start affecting things. So bear that in mind when you're using tube compression that you can because they imprint a lot of character and saturation, low order harmonics, that kind of thing. It can affect your low end and well, and your mid range and the high end as well. So just be aware of, of what it can do. It, you know, it, it can almost act like an equalizer. You know, it, it, it's, it, there's filters involved. So obviously it can add or take things away. So, I mean, for instance, the, the SSL is very famous for eating away at a bit of low end if you if you compress too much with it. So just be wary when you use compressors that they can actually affect the overall sound um, of the track that you're you're working with. So let's move on to the Manly Verimu. Have used this piece of hardware. I haven't compared these two right next to each other, so I can't say how close it is, but it does react in a similar way. And I do really, really like it. Slow attack, fast recovery, and let's just have a listen. So I'm not using the sidechain in this case, let's use the sidechain. It's probably the most subtle out of the tube compressors that I will use, which is why I do use this one in mastering sometimes. The other ones so far would tend to be buses and the mix bus. Very occasionally, I might, depending on what kind of music it is, I will use a Fairchild in mastering. But the very Mu for Manly, I would use in mastering. Uh, it's very, very subtle. But for me, it's the most rounded one. It, it kind of, if you if you push it, it really, really rounds things off, and it has a lovely kind of fluffy, warm, creamy feeling to it. <laughs> So using the mix knob here, I can push it a little bit further and then just dial it back. So really just to finish up with, this is free. And it's from, from a company called Analog Obsession who do a ton of free plugins, most of which are really, really good. A lot of them have a lot of character. He does a lot of really, really good compressors, good EQs and saturation plugins. And like I said, they're all free. And this particular one I really, really like. And I will use this to get a bit of flavor sometimes.
really, really nice and warm. I do. I actually really, really like this considering it's free and uh, definitely worth checking out. Check out Analog Obsession um, plugins. Uh, most of his plugins are really, really good. He does a really, really good SSL, couple of Poltec style plugins, and some other compressors, uh, a really good LA-2A compressor. But this one, yeah, really, really nice. If you like tube compression, uh, definitely pick this one up. So there you have it, tube compression, adding source to the burger in the bun. It's, it's not something that I would do all of the time, but it is something that I like doing. You know, it, when we work with digital files, you know, they can sometimes be, you know, it's difficult to explain really, but they, they sound digital. You know, you've probably heard people say that. And so we use tape plugins and we use EQ, roll off, you know, and tube compression is another way to make a digital file sound a bit creamier and a bit warmer and a bit more analogy. Don't like using that word, but I'll use it in this case. So try out some, some tube compression. You know, it just adds a little bit of flavor. It's really, really good just on tracks as well, guitars, vocals, etc. But I will use it in mastering sometimes. I will use it on the mix bus quite a lot. Bear in mind that you have to be subtle. You're trying to imprint a flavor. You're not really trying to make something sound compressed. As soon as you hear the compression, it's not really serving its purpose. What not serving, what, not the purpose that I want it to serve anyway. When I use tube compression in this way, I don't want to hear the compression. I just want to add some flavor to it. So, you know, that, that was a demonstration on, on, on how I would use tube compression to imprint flavor on my mixes and masters. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews. This is the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.